So what is genetic engineering? Well, genes are the substance of life. You and I have the entire library of life in our own cells. In fact, every one of your cells, just about, apart from sperm or egg or red blood cells, has a complete copy of the knowledge needed to create a clone of you. That's the extraordinary thing. The other extraordinary thing is that all life on Earth has the same computer language, if you like. So you can cut and paste genes from one creature into another and they seem to work. A, a, a mosquito genes work at a human being. A human genes work at a cucumber. A cucumber genes work at an oak tree and an oak tree genes, well, they'll probably work at a chimpanzee. I'm exaggerating a little to make a point, but the fact is that around 82% of all genes in every living cell, just about, are the same. And they program similar things. And it won't surprise you, therefore, that there's only around 1.5% difference between you and an orangutan monkey, and an absolutely tiny amount between your genes and someone else's genes, both of you human. So, we're in an interesting area here. And once scientists discovered that the language is basically universal, and that you can cut and paste genes as easily as cutting a, a slice of text out of a Microsoft Word document, that opened an extraordinary new world of possibilities. It opens a world of being able to create a fly with extra eyes on its wings, or a, um, a, a cabbage with, uh, that is, has within it the gene from a scorpion's tail that enables the scorpion to make poison. The cabbages kill caterpillars, but we don't know what happens to people. Um, it enables us to consider uh, the creation of a pig with a certain amount of human genes added so that the pig cells feel more human and can be used perhaps in transplantation. That's so long as you're not worried about the risks of also transplanting silent pig viruses that could set off a new human pandemic, but that's another story. You see, once we're talking about swapping genes around, you start to imagine uh, not only kinds of exciting possibilities, but all kinds of perhaps alarming ones too. Take HIV. HIV is a mutant gene. Well, at least it's based on a mutant gene, it was from an animal virus which mutated as it transferred into human beings. SARS, when it started to spread around the world, causing an awful lot of panic, only 860 deaths, 8,600 cases, but it was enough to dislocate the global economy, at least in Southeast Asia. SARS itself was a a yet another example of a mutant virus which changed its character as it moved from one animal species into another. Bird flu is another example of a virus that we hope will not change because if it does we are concerned scientists think that it could set off a global pandemic which could kill a huge number of people so gene therapy yes it offers us great hope for the future the ability to manipulate a faulty gene to insert an active version of the right gene yes very exciting but if you also at the same time were to program the sperm or the eggs of an individual then the changes that you make to that individual would not just die out with that person, but they could give rise to generation after generation uh, for the whole for the, of the future of humankind, potentially, with all kinds of potential risks for unknown uh, generations in the future. So it's a complicated area, very exciting, full of challenge and promise, but also raising the most profound possibilities about the future of life on Earth.